Welcome back to Dave's Gone By on AM 1240 WGBB Freeport and live streaming on the web at AM 1240 WGBB.com. And it's time for Dave's Gone Cultural with a guest. It's kind of a mix of Dave's Gone Cultural segment and Dave's Got Guests segment because I'm going to talk theater with this fella, as I have done a few times in the past. He's a good friend of mine and very lively and fun to talk to. His name is Jeff Goodman. He's been a theater critic for quite a few years and um, will probably have a lot to say about the season past, or at least the year past, 2004, on and off Broadway. So first I want to welcome you, Jeff. Welcome back to the show. Hi, I feel so lively. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. You're, you're Mr. Jovial. Uh, and what do you feel jovial about from, from the 2004 season, like on Broadway or off? What were some of the things you liked and didn't? Well, the last season, but it wasn't from last year. I, I still feel jovial. It's a, I'm, not, I'm having an Avenue Q hangover. Really? Still? From, from that, that brilliant uh, victory. It was a really well orchestrated victory, too, as far it was, as their it marketing. Ran, they ran it just like the Oscars victories. They yeah. really advertised for it. Although I think they did it as a joke. Well, they, they knew they had to do something kind of different. And they had, be, they had to look hipper than thou, mm-hmm. you know, and, and cooler. And, and they kind of wanted to be cute about it because at first they probably didn't think they had a shot in hell. And no. then when people really started loving the show, Avenue Q, they said, wait a minute, this could really snowball. And it did. Yeah. Who, who would believe it? I mean, I really couldn't believe it. it, it the minute the minute they won Best best uh, lit Music... Mm-hmm. I, and the Tonys, yeah. What? Yeah, I said, oh, oh, my God, it's going to win Best Musical. And you were right. I thought Wicked would take it. Um, I really you know, I thought lot. towards the end, I thought Wicked would take music, but I really thought Avenue Q was going to take Best Musical. Because right. I, I thought of it, and I said, you know, people usually vote with what, you know, the Best Musical to them is the one they had the most fun in. And, yeah, a lot of people really felt, as, as delight, I thought Wicked was pretty spectacular just to see, and I liked some of the music, but, but Avenue Q was, in a way, just such light-hearted, hilarious fun. Mm-hmm. And people, as I said, vote with your heart, and people did. They, yeah. they really got, got through, like, all the spectacle and said, you know what, Avenue Q was really cute, was really cool. Um, what, what else did you see that you really liked? Uh, list. I'm trying to think what's open that I... Well, I'll, I'll give, I'll run down sort of the list of the Broadway open. Well, you know there aren't that, that you many know... of them, uh, yeah. I, one of the things I really liked that I, I thought was it's a, it, I didn't like it for anything else other than great direction mm-hmm. was Dracula. Oh, okay. I thought it had great direction and like you know I think when Death Mackinac does something you have to go see it. But yeah. it, you know just like they had him floating, he doesn't have to float, but he got him to float. You know, and then all the flying. I thought that was done really well. It was. I wouldn't say it was a good musical, but I think they trashed it so. Completely, the critics did, well, without I, really appreciating the fact that it wasn't bad. It well, wasn't good, it's but not a good musical. <laughs> well, what, well, what's and, wrong? And with what it? they really did is they kind of screwed with the story. It kind of got boring. Yeah, except well. you know, you loved Renfield, and then of course he dies. You know, halfway through the show, <laughs> one of your favorite characters dies. Not a good thing. Not, and you don't really care that much about the women, even though you no. get to see them naked, which is kind of a neat no. thing. But it doesn't. You don't really like, uh, you know, which they, hurts. They were totally unappealing, the women. Right, and then the men, I, you know... I well, Jonathan Parker them, was interesting. Yeah. They made him interesting, but the way they changed the storyline didn't work either. What about the score? Do you remember any songs from Dracula? Nothing. Yeah. yeah me too. Absolutely nothing. Something about biting your neck and something about flies. <laughs> <No. laughs> All right, well, did you see the musical Brooklyn? Yes. And? Talk about feeling cold Uh-oh. and not caring about the characters. I thought, I thought the, see there, I thought the acting was supreme. I, I really liked the, the cast was so talented. The problem is you could care less about the characters. Mm-hmm. And all you did is go out and sing the costumes. Your, your other job is that you do parties and things and, and catering with balloons and flowers and, what, what, what is the actual, what is that called? It's called Fancy Schmancy. Fancy we don't sh- do flowers, but we do everything else. So, we are like- the Bar Mitzvah Mavens. The Barman from Amazing's Fancy Schmancy. How can people find out about that? They can call us at 516-797-3229. Thanks so much for the plug. Oh, you're, you're so welcome. And I also want to just make it clear that you know about design things and elements like that and creating stuff. So when you see the, the clever costumes in, in Brooklyn, it's, it's on another level, too. Well, that's, you know, what do you think sparks my creativity is watching all these other people's creativity? 
Let me ask you about uh, some of the revival musicals that have come through over the past... Actually, they're pretty recent, too. We've had... Yeah. Um, first of all, Lacage came back. Lacage of Fole. Now, that... I want to hear what you have to say about that for just one second first, because I have a very interesting take on that and no one else puts on it. Well, I saw the, the original edition. It was, it was kind of late in the run, and I wasn't... I had not seen much of Broadway back then, of 20 years ago or so. And so I thought it was okay. I thought it was cute. And I liked the musical itself a lot better this time. I think uh, when you see so much more over the years and you see what everybody's been doing, and I sat there and I was like, you know, Jerry Herman really, really knows what he's doing when he's making a musical. But he just repeats the same four songs over and over and over. Yes, uh, that bothered me. It bothered me that um, I always thought that I Am What I Am was just one standalone song, and then you realize he opens the show with the same melody, and then it comes back with the Cajels. You know, he could have written one or two more songs, oh, but yeah. the show itself has a certain something. It's a Jerry Hermanness. Well, right. Um, now I'll tell you what I was going to say. Yeah, you yeah. didn't pick up on what I... Well, again, I picked up on design work. In my year has been of just theater design. I didn't think the design uh, for, for Lacage was particularly... Not, the costumes were okay, but I, I didn't like the good, sets. But uh, the thing that hit me first uh-huh. was... Oh man, this is just like a. T- it was touring company sets. Yeah. It was horrible sets. They were just like a touring company. I think they took that stage and they pared it down. You know, they made the stage a lot smaller. The Cajels were m- much more masculine than they were before. Because I, unfortunately, am old enough to remember the original original. Well, so as I said, so yeah. I, I saw it too. And, and, I mean, yeah, the Cajel, I mean, I'm not up. Th- I don't really go to La Cage Ball to see the Cajels, maybe I'm different in that. Um, I well, don't care that they look is. like women. It's kind of gross to me. That's a personal thing. I want to see the show. I want to see the story of these two right. men. Well, the, the Cajels really tend to be the show because people want to see more of that. Although, I must say that I did like it better this time because Harvey rewrote the book. Did he really? Yes. Because in the first thing, that, and, and he rewrote exactly what I hated about the first the Which first was? Time. If you've seen the movie, the, the the French movie, yes, okay, the character of the maid is fantastic. The first time around, that character was like almost completely obliterated. He had like three lines in the whole show, and he incorporates the maid a lot more. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, I didn't think the maid was that funny, quite honestly. Oh, the maid's uh, the maid is a very pivotal role. I I think it's because it's he is so out there and and he says whatever. Yeah, I think, that, but I think a different actor could make even more of it than this particular one did. I, I, thought he did I really thought he did this one did fine. The other thing that struck me is that originally, as soon as he came out on stage, I thought Daniel Davis. I kept thinking Gene Barry. Okay? Oh, yeah. However, after I got into the show, Daniel Davis made it his own, and he is spectacular in it. He's a very good. I mean, they're both. And Gary Beach is. is Gary kind of Beach, good. I was a little disappointed in because. He he made Zaza a little bit too internal. You know what I mean? Especially I Am What I Am. He didn't come out with that big I Am Telling You number. You know what I mean? Mm. He, I like the way he began it, but then when he pushed it, I didn't quite buy because it. Because you didn't buy it because he, he he wasn't so overtly upset. Oh, well, no, I could see. No, I, just, I, 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 that, I would much rather have seen Zaza be more open. You know what I mean? Well, okay. Let me, let, before, more we, before we spend all our time on Lacage, let, let's go to okay. another couple of shows, because this is kind of a year-end wrap-up. Well, we theme. also had the revival of Pacific Overtures, which I loved. Uh-huh. Um, did you see the original Pacific Overtures? Yeah, uh, no, no, no. You did not. So, so you came to this one, as I did, kind of clean, and um, what well, was it specifically about Pacific Overtures that you liked? Well, first of all, I think it's Sondheim's greatest undone musical. Is it because it's undone by some book problems in the second act, or undone that nobody no, does it? No, undone because no one ever produces it. Yeah, okay. It's, it's this and anyone can whistle, or mm. it's too great undone. Okay. But I think it has brilliant music, and I don't think the second act has a problem. Do you? Yeah, I do. I, do I think, think we, we get so... We, we get into, at first, that fisherman and his wife, and she's... As you say, there's a character who would be really interesting, who disappears very early into the show... And we start following him, but the, the musical itself is so segmented, book-wise. You know, we go from here well, to here. It, it's sort of an overview from a crane shot of what's well, happening in Japan. I think what happens is the first act is the slowness of the old Japan. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. And, and it, until, you know, the, the Americans came, they thought they got rid of them. And the second act shows you everything moved so fast after everyone industrialized it. But I still lost the through line of that guy who was pro- the went from a nobody the, to the being... The Shogun and the Fisherman? Yeah. And then, and then you know, suddenly he, they're changing things and years well, pass no, and they kill each other. Hats. Like, Bola has a very good number. That it's done very well. With this it's program. done well. But I, I'm not saying that it's this production that has this problem. I have a feeling that the, the show as a whole has this weird kind of wants to be two things at once. And not just wants to be about Japan and then wants to tell the story as if it were Japanese. Mm-hmm. I'm saying it wants to be this overview of all the events that happened and yeah. tell the intimate stories. And the intimate stories just get confused and kind of kind well, of lost. All I could say is I, I don't see the problem with, with all that. But what I, what I did see was a brilliant production. I thought, I thought Someone in the Tree really moved me this time. Love because I it's love a great that song. That, that's uh, that's a wonderful. I mean, that song just stays in your head for days. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think but I discussed with you my problem with the song though in the show. Um, the fact that as great a song as it is, what really happens is you have two guys. It, it, it's all about a, a, the beginning meeting of the Japanese and Commodore Perry's people, and um, what, something goes on in a tent where they're obviously arguing or trying to make a treaty or just being cordial or whatever they're doing. And the only report we get on that is from two people who happen to be outside the hut. One was in a tree and one was watching from... That's what makes it so interesting because before the whole... See, it's set up by the the, um, narrator character Mm -hmm. tells you that there's no record of what was done because it was done for no reason. It was just done to let them come and go. Well, yeah. So there was no record kept. But but the thing the the only problem that uh, with the song for me was as brilliant a, an idea of it as it is because one guy can see everything that's going on but he can't hear a word and they put it together and the other person right he heard everything but he see, but they don't they spend a lot of the song just saying I saw it I saw it I heard it I heard it no. but they tell us very very little of what they actually saw and heard but you that's, don't, you what don't all they can do is tell you what they saw and heard he goes someone someone reads a list from a box and the other guy says. Someone speaks of laws. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess. I guess. So, and you just figure there's going to be something more that they tell you. And But they say one or two little things, and then suddenly it's back to, you know, I'm someone in a tree. I was someone in a tree. I was someone watching from oh, here. Oh, that's the song. Yeah. What do you want? Anywho. What do you think of, what I did like is yeah. in, that, in the first act, when the fisherman and his wife are walking home before, you know, when he thinks he's doomed. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was just lovely. Oh, yeah, there, there's a couple of beautiful songs I mean, in there. there I, there's No Other Way, and... Um, right. Pretty Lady is, is a, a... Pretty Lady, I thought, was a okay. scary song, but yeah. But it was but it was kind of done to frighten you. <laughs> well, they, they were, it is. They, they turn into rapists. Well... Almost. They're stopped in their tracks. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Fiddler literally. on the Roof. Let, let's move to Fiddler. Fiddler? Yeah. Not yeah. a great revival. Either. How come? I, did you think it was a great revival? Great revival, no, but Fiddler always is Fiddler. Fiddler's Fiddler, and that's fine. But, but what, what was missing then? A energy. great caveat? I'm oh, sorry, energy? Energy. And, okay. and, they, and they, you know, certain things, it's so funny, because when, when you, you screw around with my favorite stuff, you, you don't win, you know? <laughs> like when they take Grandma's title and don't make her interesting. Hmm, okay. Very, very bad move. You know? And I don't even remember the... the when Muddle the Taylor has more energy... <laughs> well, I didn't like Muggle. I thought he was hamming and and going, you know, completely but it, berserk. But it needed the it needed the energy in this thing. Now, what's happening coming up is very interesting. Oh, tell me. I mean, yes, I've mentioned this. Tevia? with Andrea Martin. Is I know. There? I can't. I hope they'll let us back in because, my gosh, I would not miss that. No, me neither. Oh my god! I mean, you, the only song he could pull off, I think, is. Do you love, love me? me. But, yeah, but, do I want? He'll be singing that to Muggle, you know. Yeah, right? <laughs> hey, what about some of the plays that opened um, in the past season? Did well, you Gem see of the, Mar- the Ocean I thought was terrific. The, the August Wilson play, Gem of the Ocean. One of his best or middle or what? I think one of his best. Because? Because it was interesting. It told the, it told the story. It told about the period. See, he did exactly what he wants to do with his, I don't know, a trilo- three plays a trilogy. What's ten plays? A decalogue, I guess. A decalogue, okay. But it did what he wanted with his decalogue. And I thought Felicia Rashad, even though I don't think they'll ever give her a Tony Award again, 
Well, she deserved it more for this, you're right, than this, this, she was unre- almost unrecognizable. She was really cool in this. She was terrific. What did you think of uh, Democracy? I thought you were... Were you the board member? Democracy, one? I was... I, I liked it. Mm-hmm. However, I think it's a very tough sell to... You know, I didn't love it. I thought it was interesting because of the whole idea. Because I really didn't know about that controversy. Because in America, we're kind of insulated from those kind of things. But I think... I, I, I should mention, it's about Herr Willy Brandt in, in Germany and his incredible... It catches him at the height of his power and then shows his amazingly quick downfall through and internal also, intrigue as well as external out in East Germany. And, yeah. and, there's, and there's always that thing, was there really an Eastern German, East German spy hmm. in his cabinet or whatever that is, his advisors? Um, yeah. So but I, my only problem with it was uh, the acting. I thought some of the supporting players were pretty weak. I would have loved to have seen an old English, even though it's all about Germans, I think it needed an all English cast. It needed more Michael Cumstees and fewer Richard Mazur's, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and what about Twelve Angry Men? Twelve Angry Men was a brilliant revival. That no, was not a revival. It was new. Um, it, it never played it never played Broadway before. It was the show was from like nineteen sixties I found out. Right. But, um it never been done on Broadway. It's never been it's done premiere, the premiere, I think. Before. You know, as a Broadway show. Oh, I thought well I thought it was good then. Good. Okay. I, I, really, I really did enjoy it. I thought it was terrific, yeah. And, and as long as we're on the roundabout, you must praise The Foreigner. I didn't see The Foreigner. That's off-Broadway with uh, um, Matthew Broderick. I know you love that play for Francis personal reasons, yeah. Didn't you once appear in a production of it? Too? Oh, yeah, yeah. But that's not the reason why I love the show. Oh, okay. I love the show because of its message. Which is? Never underestimate. Nice. Don't, don't underestimate anyone because... That's that's what it is. Is, is the people are constantly underestimating the the characters. Let's, and they yeah. may not actually do what they seem to do, but they but what they what they are doing is it's it's so convoluted. You have to, <laughs> see it. you know, because they don't. It's not like they're accomplishing what they actually look like they're accomplishing. Cool. But it's but they still are underestimated, and the power of several underestimated people beats a lot of things. If, well, we thought so in, in December, uh, on November 2nd, but anywho. A um, <laughs> couple of quick questions. Let, let's just close this with but a couple of... let's go see that. That's The Foreigner um, yeah. at the roundabout. Now, the one-person shows that open. There have been a few of them. Um, it was like, good, better, terrible. Okay, fine. <laughs> 700 Sundays, the Billy Crystal. Loved it. Loved it, too. Probably the best thing. Uh, the, that's the one-person show this season. And what did you think of Whoopi's Return? Whoopi, mm-hmm. you could deal with Ada. Really, I loved the first. I loved the first half hour. Yeah, when through her, um, I forget the character's name. The, the Fon- John. It's not Fontaine. It Fontaine. Fontaine. Yeah, through Fontaine, she is gives her own point of view of of her political points of view. Uh, but her other characters, bullsh- they just go on too long. There's hmm. too much talk of tampons and oh, you know? yeah. I guess you're all up in it, aren't you? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what that means. What did you think of the Mario Cantone, by the way? That's Loved closing it. Soon. Also, you know what the problem was? What? The biggest problem with the Mario Cantone is Billy Crystal came up with a similar thing and just did it better. And did it better, yeah. I but thought, well, Mario I thought Cantone also the... is a laugh and a half. Yeah. He is, I would certainly pay to see, that, see him. As he, long, you know, with fresh material. Yeah, he had me rolling, except for, like, the Liza and Judy stuff. That just went on and on. But the yeah. other stuff, just, uh, there were times when I was really, also with Crystal. With Crystal, there were times I was hurting that kind of laughter, where, uh, please don't tell a joke for ten seconds so I can catch my breath kind of right. laughing. So, that's, that's pretty... Well, so, I don't know, if, you know, a lot of Billy Crystal's stuff was about his family, and, and some was very sad, and some was very funny. Oh, yeah, that, that made it great, too, in the second. I, I think it's a little too long, but, but there were things that he did. That barbecue, the mime barbecue. Oh, yeah. Where it seems like it's just going to be uh, kind of cute, kind of, and then he just goes on with it, and literally, uh, again, you know, aching with oh, yeah. laughter. But, so, but he's, a lot of the stuff you've seen before. Oh, yeah. I mean, I knew about the uh, his talking penis. You know, now, now. He's been doing that for 15 years. But it's, it all worked together. It was a great yeah. show. It, it really did. It, it, it put together some of his old stuff, like the birth of the baby. It's right. He's done that before. But it's just this, he puts together some of his acts, and it all is about his life, which is very interesting. 
Oh, sure. I mean, his his whole all the jazz people that his oh grandfather and father knew. And who would ever think the first person he went to uh, see a movie with was um, was Billy Holiday? He sat on Billy, you know, next to on Billy, Billy Holiday's lap watching a movie. Uh, who could believe? And he didn't turn into a strange fruit. But you know, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Goodman. Last question: What are you really looking forward to seeing uh, on or off Broadway in two thousand and five? Oh, Spamalot. Spamalot, really yes. That's that turning into as hot a ticket as the producers over in Chicago, by the way. Yes. So they're really. I think, who knows? Well, you know, it's sold out for the first two months of its run already. Oh my gosh! It's going to. It's probably going to recoup its investment before it opens. So, any others besides uh, the Monty Python Spamalot? I think that, um... Then you're looking for... Scandals is Scoundrels, be. right, yeah. Scoundrels, I mean. Um, I, I, you know what I'm waiting for? The revival of, um... What's the one about the women in the, uh, getting their hair done? Oh, Steel Magnolias. Yes. That'll be the first Broadway production of it. It was yes. off-Broadway 20 years or 15 well, years ago. kind of following in the footsteps of Little Shop. Sure. Um, there's, there's a whole lot of interesting stuff coming up. All right. Um, well, I hope you'll be there to track it with us now and again on this radio program. I want to remind folks that I'm talking to Jeff Goodman, who uh, can do your party stuff and fancy schmancy balloon stuff by calling 516, what's the number? 797-3229. Mm-hmm. And I should also, you are a legitimate published theater critic, I just can't tell people where you write for because it's generally under a pseudonym. Bowie, Bowie, Sequin. Bowie, Sequin. <laughs> but uh, you, you, as, as everybody can tell, you know your theater, you love your theater, and you're, you're great fun to talk to. And you know what I do best? What's that? I do bar mitzvahs that are themes with Broadway. <laughs> of best. course, Broadway-themed bar mitzvahs. Can you imagine? Well, if, <laughs> if I ever have a kid, I want you to do a, a night mother bar mitzvah for him. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> like, put little shotguns on all the tables. With Brenda Blessing. Everybody gets salty, uh, you know, hot chocolate. It'd be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Goodman, Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Happy 2005. Thanks. Have a, uh, thanks for visiting the neighborhood. Always my pleasure. <laughs>